This is the Louis T. Network. What are you doing? It's Thursday, which means there's Thursday night football. So don't watch me, watch TV. <laughs> but in the meantime, while you're waiting for that football, I'm on TV, so watch me. Whoa, it's your man, Louis T, here on Pro Football Central Weekly Thursday edition of week number seven. So looking at the Thursday night matchup, Thursday Night Football, NFL Network, Nestler, Mayock, Seahawks on the road, taking their 5-1 NFC West leading record to Arizona to take on the 3-3 three three Arizona Cardinals. Some people's dark horse pick to make it to the postseason in the NFC. And looking at this Arizona Cardinals team, they're a solid bunch. And I give them credit. They're 3-3 three three on the season right now. And their level of competition that they've played has been fairly solid. And to this point, the Cardinals have been a solid football team. And 3-3 three and three is exactly that. That is the epitome of being solid as a 500 team on the season. You look at the Arizona Cardinals and what they've been able to do to this point. They've played some solid football. And I broke this down on another one of my programs. If you want to beat the Arizona Cardinals, the easiest way to do so, A, force turnovers. They're going to turn the football over. Okay, Carson Palmer has been Eli Manning Jr. this season. If Eli Manning is the king of the turnover in 2013, Carson Palmer isn't that far behind him. He's turned the football over in just about every game this season multiple times. And so Carson Palmer has an issue not throwing picks this season. And I don't know what his problem is, but he's got to be more efficient with the football. He's got to be more of a caretaker of the football, whether it's not fumbling when he's sacked in the pocket or not throwing the football directly to an opponent. He's got to stop turning the football over if this Arizona Cardinals team wants to take it to the next level and try to make it to the postseason. Right now, they've been able to get by on some really good defense and some timely scores to win football games. But you're not going to play the 0-5 Tampa Bay Buccaneers anymore. You're not going to get the Carolina Panthers at home again. Now you need to be able to rev it up and start playing better football. You've got to play your division. You just played the 49ers, weren't able to beat them on the road because of turnovers. You lost to St. Louis early in the season, first game of the season, matter of fact, because of turnovers. And you lost to New Orleans because of turnovers. And because of the second reason why the Arizona Cardinals can be had a very athletically gifted tight end. Again, Todd Bowles seems to think that it's a good idea to match Jeremiah Bell up one-on-one -on -one versus the other team's best tight end target. If this guy is an athletic marvel, you're going to win that matchup and it's going to help you win the football game. In the three losses that the Arizona Cardinals have had, they faced Jared Cook Jr. of the St. Louis Rams, had a field day against them, two touchdowns, over 100 yards, and about seven or eight grabs. You look at Vernon Davis and what he was able to do last weekend, he absolutely obliterated this Arizona Cardinals secondary, and he had two touchdowns, and, and he was all over the place. They could not stop him. And then you look at Jimmy Graham and what he was able to do against this Arizona Cardinals football team when they played the Saints in New Orleans. He destroyed this Cardinals secondary as well. And so if you have an athletically gifted tight end that can stretch the field vertically and win one-on-one -on -one matchups consistently, you'll beat the Arizona Cardinals, especially if they can 
forced turnovers being the defense that is in that game. And the Seattle Seahawks are more than capable of forcing the issue, forcing Carson Palmer into some mistakes, and getting the football back to their offense. What they do not have and what they lack is an explosive tight end. Now, I've seen Wilson this year, and he's been solid. But he doesn't scare me. You're getting back Zach Miller, possibly in this game, and that's going to help your offense tremendously. But I, I don't think that Luke Wilson nor Zach Miller scare anyone vertically. And I think where Zach Miller is going to pay off for you is in the red zone. You've struggled in the red zone this season, had to settle for more field goals than you would probably like to have to this point. But he'll help you in that manner, but he will not stretch the defense. He will not create one-on-one -on -one mismatches. And so the Arizona Cardinals are relieved to know that they don't have to worry about the athletic tight end getting loose into their secondary like they have had to worry about in their three losses. And so the Cardinals feel good about that. They're playing some exceptional defense. I don't think a lot of people know how solid this Arizona Cardinals team is defensively, especially with Daryl Washington coming back into the mix. Even though they've lost some linebackers for the season, this Cardinals team plays a good brand of defense. And you know where it starts. It starts with Patrick Peterson out wide. You go to Darrell Washington at the linebacker position. You go down to the defensive line with Calais Campbell and Darnell Dockett and company. This defense is a solid bunch. Carlos Dansby has been renewed since he's come out to Arizona. He's been playing some good football. They've been getting after the quarterback. They've been forcing turnovers. This is a very good Arizona Cardinals defense and it seems like this team as a whole plays better when they're at home just like the Seattle Seahawks have a distinct advantage when they're at home I believe the Arizona Cardinals have a very distinct advantage when they're at home they play their best football when they are at home and so looking at the Cardinals in this game I think they have a legitimate shot at coming away with a victory. If you are Seattle, the keys to the game are force the issue, force turnovers. The Cardinals are going to turn the football over. That is a known fact. Your job is to force as many turnovers as possible. Now, if you're the Seattle Seahawks, make Carson Palmer beat you. Do not let the Cardinals have a balanced attack with Rashard Mendenhall. And more importantly, forget about Rashard Mendenhall. Don't let Andre Ellington beat you. He's been a surprise for this Arizona Cardinals team. He's run the football. He's caught it out of the backfield. He's a shifty guy that can get loose in your secondary, make guys miss, and get into the end zone. You must contain Andre Ellington. They love to get this guy the football out of the backfield. So if you can slow down the running game and, and essentially bring it to a halt because the Cardinals are never going to be confused with a power running football team. They're never going to be confused with a running attack that is lethal. If you can reduce their rushing attack to essentially nothing and force Carson Palmer to beat you, keep them in third and long all night long, he's going to turn the football over. You're going to force him into some mistakes. The more mistakes you force them into, the shorter fields your offense gets, the more points you can put on the scoreboard, the, the more likely it is you'll be able to come out of Arizona with a win. You weren't able to do it last year. It's a tough place to play and win. And if you are looking to win this football game, it starts with your defense up front forcing turnovers, getting after Carson Palmer, stopping the run. You look at it from an offensive perspective. Russell Wilson has been under siege this season. It's no secret this offensive line has been banged up. And they're starting to get a little bit healthier along that offensive line. Still missing some key starters, but they're starting to get guys back. Max Unger came back. You already had J.R. Sweezy. So you're, you're getting some of your stuff back along that offensive line. Now what you need to do is run the football. Run it with that attitude that you've always ran it with. And continue to do that. And then use that rushing attack to suck the defense up with play action fake. And find some big play receivers like Golden Tate, like Doug Baldwin, like Sidney Rice, and see if you can stretch the field a little bit in this game. And make some plays. And when opportunities present themselves to get seven, score touchdowns. That's been the Achilles heel of this 
Seattle Seahawks team this season is settling for field goals. Get touchdowns when they are available. If you can score touchdowns in this game and force turnovers, you will have a very, very good shot to go to 6-1 and one on the season. But I expect the Arizona Cardinals to come out with some intensity that will be unmatched by the Seattle Seahawks. I expect the Arizona Cardinals to force some turnovers in this game. And I expect the Arizona Cardinals to win this football game. We'll see if Seattle can go into Arizona and do something that they weren't able to do last season. Come out with a victory. This is going to be a great football game. If Russell Wilson is on, if he's running around, if he's eluding uh, tacklers and rushers, if he's the same guy that carved up the Carolina Panthers earlier in the season, if he's the same guy that single-handedly brought this team back versus the Houston Texans on multiple fourth down conversions, if he's the guy that is slippery in the pocket and, and is elusive and, and the Arizona Cardinals can't bottle him up and he's making plays, after he escapes the pocket, then the, the Seattle Seahawks will win this football game. But if the Cardinals are able to keep him in the pocket, keep contained, force him to beat them from within the pocket, and force this Seattle Seahawks team to be one-dimensional, hey, you've got to take something away. And if I am the Arizona Cardinals, it's the running game. Make Russell Wilson beat you. If he can do that, you tip your cap to him, touche, and the Seattle Seahawks will walk out of here with a victory. But if not, and I don't see it happening, I think the Arizona Cardinals will get this one at home. We'll see. It's going to be a great football game. I can't wait to watch. It's going to be a lot of fun. Great theater on Thursday night football. So, time for a mental snack. And the mental snack for today is... More Josh Freeman talk. We've been talking about this guy ad nauseum. This is it. I promise. This is it. The last talk of Josh Freeman. This is the last time I'll bring him up on this program for a while. Because we've been talking about him. Seems like nonstop. But the Minnesota Vikings, and I talked about this on the Tuesday edition of Pro Football Central Weekly, that they needed to start Josh Freeman as soon as possible. Monday would be your most ideal situation to start him. You get an extra day of preparation. And look, just implement some things that he's comfortable with. You don't have to have the whole playbook available to him in this game. Limit your plays to the ones that he's familiar with, the ones that he's comfortable with. Run them and run them effectively. Hand the ball off to Adrian Peterson. And when play action fake makes itself available and guys come open, he's got to hit them. I said he needed to play against the Giants on Monday night, and the Vikings heard me loud and clear as they've already penciled in Josh Freeman as the starter on Monday night football when the Vikings take on the New York Giants at Giants Stadium. So, huge move for the Minnesota Vikings. Let's see if this can jumpstart their season because, like I've said already, their season is getting late very early. And at 1-4 and four, with the 4-2 and two Bears and the 4-2 and two Lions and the 3-2 and two Packers, You've got a lot of ground to make up, and you're running out of time. Each week that you lose a football game, you lose an opportunity and time to make up ground on the rest of this division and the rest of the NFC Conference. So let's see if this Josh Freeman move is a confidence builder and a booster to a Minnesota Vikings football team that desperately needs a jolt of energy and a shot in the arm. So that's going to do it on the Thursday edition of Pro Football Central Weekly. I thank you for joining me. Time for a shameless plug and then we'll get out of here. Visit the site profootballcentral.com. Something for everyone. Podcasts, print articles, you name it. It's on the site profootballcentral.com. And so for myself and the rest of the profootballcentral.com staff, we are Pro Football Central. See you back here on Tuesday when we break down week number seven in the National Football League, among other topics. See you then. Enjoy the football tonight and over the weekend. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.